So now I want to ask, the, I'm going to be bringing up Galen Poss and his uh, esteemed panel talking about the National Restaurant Association and their, um, their, their big news that was maybe, maybe almost a year ago now. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting story that we're going to all learn a lot from. Because there's so much content in that, I think it's a 40-minute uh, section, we're going to ask some of the polling, uh, we're going to ask a polling question right now and then a word cloud, and then as those answers appear, then Galen will come up with his, with his uh, panel. So let's ask the first question, which I believe is a polling question. Were you aware of the National Restaurant Association's partnership with Winsight Media prior to seeing it on the ECF program? Now, it came out on the ECF program probably six, seven, maybe six months ago. So, but were you aware of it prior to seeing it on the ECF program? So please vote. And we did find out that as you put things into the second screen, you have one chance uh, to put something in. So you can't do multiple times. So. I'm, 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 I, that, I'm actually interested that it's not that big of a percentage. I mean, that was some very, very hot news. It certainly went around a certain group of people pretty quickly, but it was, uh, but 41% of you were not aware of that arrangement, the partnership prior to. Okay, the next is a word cloud. So you can only put uh, one or two words in, but you can only do one entry. So give us your word cloud on the following. What is the word? that described your reaction to the National Restaurant Association's partnership with Winsight Media. And as I'm learning how this technology works, I was given my guy at PSAV the dirty look. Every time somebody enters a new um, word, the cloud changes. So even though it's getting me a little dizzy, it's, uh, it's just being receptive to every one of your words. So I guess I can ask you to please put your words in now so then that that uh, those words will stop flying around the screen. Um, so what's the word that describes your reaction to the National Restaurant Association's partnership with Winsight Media? And I think we've teed it up uh, nicely for Galen to uh, bring up his esteemed panel. Thank you, Galen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam, and, and thank y'all for allowing us to be here this afternoon and talk about what I think is the, the most exciting uh, occurrence, uh, maybe in the entire time that I've been in this industry. And I've been here since the devil was a baby. So, and, uh, you know, back in November, uh, you know, the, the deal was consummated. And I think it was one of the most significant things that has occurred uh, in this industry because I think it sets the stage for what's going to take place in the future. Because if you look around, most of the major uh, independent trade show organizers have been acquired. There's a few independent shows, certainly Cassandra's this morning uh, is evidence of that. But there's 62% of our industry still, the shows in our industry still reside in the association community. So what we're going to talk about this afternoon, we're going to answer some of the words, uh, uh, you know, respond to some of the words that were in the cloud. We're going to talk about the deal you know, and how it came about, why it came about, and to kind of get us down that road. Um, if we could, Don, if you could start and tell us a little something about the association and uh, the size, scope, uh, Mary Pat, and then Mike. Uh, as you do your in own introductions, and then we'll get into the meat of the program itself. So, okay. Dawn? Thank you, Galen. Good afternoon to all of you. I'm Dawn Sweeney, the president and CEO of the National Restaurant Association. We are a 100-year-old association in the, as of this year and uh, represent the entirety of the restaurant and food service industry in the United States. So there are a million restaurants in the United States. About 660,000 of them are members of the National Restaurant Association. We employ one in 10 working Americans. We're about an $860 billion industry, all told. And uh, we at the National Restaurant Association have a, uh, we're about a $100 million association. We are very actively engaged, obviously, in federal, state, and local advocacy. We um, have been very uh, devoted to building our training and certification programming over the last decade or so. 
We have offices in D.C., in Chicago, as well as now in Orlando, Florida. We made some acquisitions over the last couple of years in the training and certification area, so we've opened an office in Orlando. And we have um, about 350 employees in those collective locations. Mary Pat Huffman, the president of the restaurant show group for Winsight Media, formerly a longtime uh, association employee of the National Restaurant Association. I uh, joined the Restaurant Association in uh, 29 years ago, how, whatever that year was, um, and, and led the, uh, and have been leading the National Restaurant Show since 2001. Um, we just concluded our 100th anniversary last week of the National Restaurant Association Show. Attendance was up about 3%. Exhibit space sales were our fifth consecutive record-breaking year. Sponsorship was up about 29%, so we have been on a really great traje trajectory for the show. And that gives you a little picture of who we are. We're 65,000 attendees from 110 countries and 2,300 exhibitors. Hi, I'm Mike Wood, CEO of Winsight. Winsight's a B2B media and information company focused on the food and beverage space and allied retail uh, industries. We're about 300 people headquartered in Chicago. Um, and we've uh, endeavored to aggregate all the premium brands in the um, uh, food and beverage space. Okay. We have three of the four movers and shakers that made the deal come together. Uh, one who's not represented is Terry Ertle, who is the uh, COO of the National Restaurant Association. It was also very integral in pulling uh, all the components together. As, you, as you'll hear as they go through it, this was uh, a little bit like moving a wheelbarrow full of frogs. You know, every time you get one hemmed up, two jump out. And it took uh, over three years from beginning to end to actually come about. So a couple thoughts about the rules for this session, okay? There are no rules, okay? It's gonna be very interactive. You can ask questions at any time. Uh, you can either just raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you, or uh, we, Kimberly you know, has the, uh, the uh, polling and the, the, uh, the opportunity to get questions there, uh, and then I'll be posing questions uh, to the panelists. So to get us kicked off, I'd like each of the panelists to basically talk about why. Okay, you know, why did, why did this make sense for the association? You know, Mike, why did it make sense for you and Mary Pat, for you and your team? Because, you know, you were, Mary Pat, you were very instrumental in terms of, you know, doing, connecting the dots as to why it works. So, uh, if you would, uh, let's start uh, with you, Don, as to why it made sense for the association. I mean, it's in your 100th year. Uh, you're talking about making a move that is certainly earth-shaking. And so why? This was a very, very big decision for us. Uh, and as you say, Galen, it did, uh, the conversations began and occurred and continued over a three-year period, although it was the final nine months where we really engaged with the board and the leadership of the uh, fiduciary leadership of the organization. Much of the prior time was really us as an executive team, which Mary Pat was a part, uh, talking about the pros and the cons and the things that would make sense or, or, or would not make sense for us to execute a deal of this magnitude. And we had been approached for many, many, many times. I've been there now for 12 years, and just a shadow of the time Mary, Mary Pat's been there, but Mary Pat and I worked together at that point for more than a decade, and we had been approached, Mary Pat in particular, uh, many, many times over the years about the possible sale of our show. And uh, we really had, each time we, we would stop and discuss it, but usually just briefly, uh, to the point that we really did feel we had the capacity and the capability to continue to grow, as Mary Pat said, consecutively year over year. We have now a very long uh, series of years where we've continued, and Mary Pat and her team have continued to break prior existing records, and, and the show was very, very healthy and a very important part of our portfolio of products and brands and the way we represent the association to the industry. In this particular case, I would say uh, the conversations began similarly to many that we had had prior with other interested uh, buyers, but as we got further and deeper into the conversations, particularly with Mike, we realized that Winsight was actually bringing a, a little different value proposition to us potentially, and so we were willing to explore this perhaps at a level that we hadn't previously been, been open to. And I would say just right out of the gate, uh, the very most important thing uh, to me as the CEO of the organization was to understand uh, where Mary Pat was on all of this. 
because she had that 27, 8, now 9 years of experience of, of uh, both being engaged and, and more recently for 20 almost years running this show, and she understood uh, what the opportunities were for us most clearly. And so I was really very uh, influenced throughout the process, as was the board ultimately, uh, knowing that Mary Pat was a very honest broker and was going to come to us with her recommendation, not for what was necessarily best for her, but what was best for the industry. And as we discovered and, and did our due diligence and our work together, and we'll talk further about kind of the unusual, I think, cre somewhat creative uh, deal that we did do here, it, it felt to us and to me particularly to be additive to what we could do by ourselves, and we were quite capable of continuing to grow and, and build this show by ourselves. But with the data analytics and the insights and the content uh, creation capability of Winsight that was quite a bit different from anybody else that we had talked to over the years, it felt like it was a, a level up, actually, uh, for what we might be able to do together. And we were very aligned on the big vision and what we wanted this to be long, long term. So I would say that those were the initial wise that we really got into the, the conversation when we, as we did. Great. Thank you very much. Mike? Yeah, what, Don's too nice to say it, but what, um, this started probably long past uh, 18 months ago. When I first walked into the office, I think it was January of 13, to meet with Don, and I think her, her initial reaction is, who is this guy? How did he get on my calendar? And how much longer do I have to sit in this meeting? Um, and I begged and pleaded uh, over the course of uh, a few years, um, and eventually we, um, uh, we did have a meeting of the minds in terms of wh what we wanted to do. And from a Winsight perspective, it was, we're going to take the leading industry trade association, the leading industry trade show, uh, and the leading media and information company and put them together, and we can better serve the entirety of the industry together than we could uh, apart. And so that was really the the broader strategic vision that, that Winsight took to the, uh, to the transaction. And Mary Pat, I mean, certainly your input was, as Dawn has indicated, critical. I mean, you set, you know, you've been running the show uh, for, uh, you know, for over 20 plus years. Why did it make sense to you? Well, first I have to call Mike out just a little bit, because there was also a 2014 meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all right. I'll, I'll be the butt of most of the, the jokes. Uh, um. So they pulled my mic, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't hear me. Okay. <laughs> Where we were in a meeting to talk about partnerships in terms of magazines, and Mike uh, was in, in the meeting, and it, it, he was exasperated, and it was the end of the meeting. He says, really, all I want is to buy the show. And I, it wasn't a no, but a hell no. And, I, <laughs> and off we went uh, on our own separate ways for quite, for quite a while. But when Terry Ertl came in 2016 as our chief revenue officer and I interviewed him um, in advance, what I said to him was, we have to act more like a media company as opposed to a trade association whose mission is absolutely to advance and protect the industry. But in addition to that, in terms of the policy and lobbying that we did as an association, we needed to become more of a media company in that while we have content, data, insights, and reach, I felt like there were gaps in a lot of those areas. And as time went on, as a year or two went on from that date, as we looked at, I felt like we were not able to keep up in terms of digital transformation with where we were at. And in that time period, to Mike's credit, he was really additive into what he kept building at Winsight in terms of acquiring properties in the food space that were very additive to his business and also would have been incredibly accretive to the trade show business. And so I just spent a little time with Don and with Terry and said, you know, next time Mike will come knocking. He came knocking like every nine months. You knew he was going to come by. Is just listen, what kind of partnership might we be able to create that would be accretive for both organizations? And that's what then transpired over a, a number of a uh, number of months and years um, in being creative and both sides continue to talk on a dialogue that brought both organizations together as partners for the long term and to take care of our people and grow the business and help the industry. So Don, did you ever consider just selling this show outright as opposed to entering into a long term partnership agreement? 
As we did our analysis of the options on the continuum, we, and we wanted to be in a position when it came time to discuss this with our board, to show them the various options that we considered and to have done the analysis of each of the options. So, and so yes, there was certainly at one end of the spectrum the option of selling the show outright and then just stepping back and you know, hoping it goes well. That was not our, uh, our sense of what was right for the industry, quite honestly, that we really felt that the association's continued involvement and support of this really significant gathering was going to be important for the long-term success of the industry. And so we didn't really give that a, a, a great deal of, uh, of consideration, although we did do the analysis and look at what the impact of that might have been. Okay, now, you know, during the early 2000s, up until about 2006, there was quite a number of association deals that were done where associations either partnered or sold their trade shows to independent show organizers. And then with the downturn of the economy in 07, the rate environment went you know, pretty bad. And so it was very difficult for an association to take the proceeds from a sale, invest it, and create that ongoing annuity they need to be able to continue to run the organization. So Mike, that takes us to, to you. What did you do differently in terms of structuring this deal that made it make both business and commercial sense to both <laughs> you and the association? Uh, we had many conversations with, uh, with Don and, and Terry, um, really to understand, and the rest of the executive team, frankly, to understand their, their goals and objectives, what made the most sense for the association. Um, and so we had the ability at the time to be uh, flexible and creative in terms of our structuring options. And so once we better understood the, the goals of the association, we were able to, um, through an iterative process come up with a structure that um, met their needs and, w and worked for us as well. So I think in part it was, I don't know, a, a half dozen different meetings with the association to understand, you know, what was the show generating back to the association in terms of economic value, um, what the association was endeavoring to do in a go forward place in terms of its education advocacy and training and certification, um, uh, what were its investment criteria and its risk tolerance. Uh, and so once we got through all of those, um, uh, those items, we were able to come up with a structure that um, sort of ticked the, the checklist each, each time uh, and ultimately uh, got, us, um, uh, got us to close the deal. Well, you want to talk a little bit about that structure? Sure. So um, I'm there, guessing most of the people in the audience would like to know. Yeah. <laughs> There's, uh, the way I think about it is... Um, there's a, a couple of a number of key components to the to the transaction. Um, one was uh, importantly for us that um, we wanted the association to be a true partner, uh, and so we uh, had accepted and, and agreed to uh, an equity partnership early on, um, whereby the uh, association would continue to benefit from the growth of the show, but also from the broader organization. Uh, and that was interesting and important to Don uh, and, and team. So that was uh, part one. Um, uh, part two was how are we going to um, replace the, uh, the revenue or contribution that the show was creating for the association. Uh, and there we came up with a mix of, um, of cash and a, uh, a seller note. Uh, or financing um, vehicle, that the association actually became a lender uh, uh, to us to get the deal done. Um, Fairly unusual, the association toting the note. So the benefit of that was, one, they had confidence in the asset. They felt comfortable about its sustainability and its growth prospects. Uh, and two, we assigned a value to the uh, note that, um, not only generated um, a return for them um, that they were used to, um, uh, but uh, added al almost twice as much on an annual basis uh, that went back to the association. Uh, and so um, the, the seller financing component allowed uh, to accomplish the goal of replacing the uh, income that the show had historically generated for the association, as well as creating a... Um, <coughs> Uh, long-term annuity um, uh, fund for the association such that they could um, operate in perpetuity without having to worry about um, the performance of the show. 
And do you want to talk about the last component? Or yep. And the 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 other important piece to the association was the the branding and the uh, sort of relationship to the show itself. And so we created a, a 45 year sponsorship agreement uh, for the for the association and the show. And so the show looks and feels. I'd be interested in Don and your perspective exactly as it had looked and felt for the last hundred years and hopefully updated slightly. But, um, uh, you know, I don't know that participants walking around felt, oh, this is new and different. I think they felt like this is the association's event. Uh, and the sponsorship agreement is really the vehicle by which we um, um, execute that objective. So. Uh, it contemplates the branding of the association. It contemplates their influence or input into uh, strategic decisions as it relates to content, as it relates to, to marketing. Um, uh, and so uh, it, it um, is a working, uh, breathing document uh, that allows us to uh, continue to engage at a, at a partnership level and, al and allow the association to participate in the, uh, the planning and execution of the event. And the last component, are you comfortable addressing that? Um, remind me. <laughs> that the association is actually a stakeholder. Uh, well, I, I said that at the, at the onset. The, okay. the investment in the, in the broader company uh, that the association made uh, was important, I think, both to the association. Yeah, but just to be clear, you, so everybody in the audience gets that. Basically, the association now also owns part of Winsight. So very interesting, very different concept, and, and, and extremely creative. Uh, Don, that was obviously received well at the association. So very much so, and I really do want to credit Mike and all of the team at Winsight that did work so hard on this, because it was a very creative uh, series of decisions, and it was iterative, and he was, Mike in particular, was very, very interested in, in um, driven by what we wanted to achieve, as opposed to kind of coming in with, you know, here's what we've got, uh, are you interested? It was very iterative, it was very um, important. The conversations that took place really did build, ultimately, a really strong foundation of partnership uh, that we are devoted to for at least the next 45 years, uh, contractually for exactly, I guess, 45 years, but that's quite a, quite a, uh, quite a time frame to be committed to, to that level of partnership. I would say, just having come off the show, which just was completed last week, our 100th uh, show, and the very first one we've done in this new partnership, I would say uh, it exceeded our expectations, actually. It, Mary Pat has set a trajectory for many, many years that the next show is gonna be better than the last, and so everybody always expects the next one to be better than the one we did before, and 2020 will be better somehow than 2019 was. But 2019 was very much on that trajectory. It was better, it was stronger, the energy was really strong. I don't think the general uh, population who, of the 65,000 people were really focused on the fact that this is now you know, uh, operationally owned by Windside because it felt very much integrated, but it felt better. And I think it's gonna continue to feel better as we build that partnership and alignment going forward and we have the ability to accelerate our, ability, our impact on the digitization and the data delivery and all the things that Winsight is bringing. But uh, I would honestly say that it was that creativity and that openness to exploring. Uh, you know, we are an industry of entrepreneurs. The restaurant industry is filled with entrepreneurs. We had a small task force of some of our best uh, entrepreneurs that were helping us to figure out how to best structure this deal. And Winsight's an entrepreneurial company, and I think it was the combination of those, the two levels of entrepreneurial energy that allowed us to, to create something that I don't know that either one of us could have exactly envisioned when we started, but it feels very right at this juncture. Mary Pat, uh, in terms of the exposure that you feel the association got at this year's show versus prior year's show, uh, can you comment on that? Yeah, I was very, very dedicated and completely committed to ensuring that all the things that we have previously done and the way we engage the board members continues. And I was very bullish on the, um, the, the sponsorship piece and the continued partnership with the association because in my tenure in the trade show business, I've seen a number of shows that have sold and it really lost that touch point and DNA of the association and the real association commitment. So our convention chairs were still board members of the National Restaurant Association. Our centennial chairman was a legacy board member of the association. 
we, we work to make sure we're integrating properties with the association booth. We launched a whole new activation area within the, uh, adjacent to the association booth that brought the audience and tied both organizations together so that people would still see us very, very much as one. And for, to Dawn's point, most of the population had no idea in terms of the difference. I think they did see some new features, and particularly around the 100th anniversary celebration and activation. And with the deal closing in November, with just six months before the show, there wasn't a lot of transformation we could make in 2019, but the exciting part is really uh, 2020 and beyond, where we can really start to better integrate all of the different products within Winsight and digital transformation. I mean, you, you've heard it here earlier today about the importance of uh, personalization, really understanding who our audience is, how do we make our events customized and personable for those exhibitors and attendees on both sides. Great, thank and you. And that's to come. Questions from the audience before we move to the next section of questioning. Anyone? Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Ned. While, while it's going over there, I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, Mary Pat, we, again, this is going to be the, the main, the key points, the gaps. <coughs> we know what we do well. We know exhibitions, large exhibitions. We know what you have done well for many years. What were the top three things that you realized you couldn't replicate and were going to be uh, handled, improved, augmented by your new partner? Speed to market in all of those areas and speed to change with, it, with how fast everything is changing, is we did have content, we have great data, we had some digital tools, but we had to evolve pretty dramatically. Um, and the ability to do that in terms of the speed which I felt we needed to do for the business to keep the trajectory going was going to be really difficult over the coming years. And I didn't want to put us behind an eight ball. I always want to be in front of it. Okay, Ned? Uh, yeah, uh, I'd be interested in uh, knowing a little bit more when you said that uh, the association is a stakeholder in Winsight. As Winsight looks forward to making another acquisition or growing the company, is the association part of that decision-making process uh, for, so for growth from, from Winsight's uh, perspective? So the association is part of the uh, transaction has um, observation rights. So they, uh, Don's um, deputy Terry uh, participates in our board's me board meetings. Uh, there's no uh, voting right given the size of the stake. Uh, they are a minority shareholder, um, and so uh, they are where we would go as uh, uh, good governance and just ask. Um, are, you, are you comfortable with this? Are you fit? But he is participating in our strategy uh, at the board level um, and beyond. Really, uh, Terry and I have been fortunate enough to develop a good um, ongoing working relationship. And so beyond just a quarterly board meeting where we're talking about um, you know, an acquisition or otherwise, we have more regular conversations to just talk about ways in which we can work more closely together. That is, um, to Don's point earlier, I think, some of those early sessions where we were trading ideas back and forth really set the groundwork for this uh, uh, for the positive relationship. And we are very comfortable, I would just add, at the association level, all the way from the board, all the way through with this relationship as Mike has described it, because our interests are completely aligned. We both all, and we all want to grow the show, we want to grow the success of the Winsight businesses, we want to serve the industry, we are very, very aligned at a very fundamental level. And so we're very comfortable with the non-voting status that we have. Uh, did that address the question? Go ahead. Um, I had the good fortune of uh, peppering Mary Pat last night at the <laughs> cocktail reception with uh, uh, several questions, so, and I still have more. <laughs> so I guess uh, in the association world, I, you know, you had mentioned about the, I, I would like to know a little bit more about the communication, number one, with not only the general board, but also the general uh, membership, number one, and w what were the pain points as far as resistance, because I just, it's, it's difficult for me to imagine that everybody kind of blessed this and said, this is, this is terrific, let's move forward, because, you know, the, the show, I assume, is a significant revenue source for the organization. You're on an uphill trend, doing well. 
and have done well for many, many years. So um, I'd just be curious from that end as far as communication and, and the overall acceptance and, again, the pain points. The second question that I have is really the operational structure. I know, Mary Pat, you are now an employee of Winsight. Um, I guess who makes, what's the engagement with the association now with the decisions as far as if you want to move the show to Orlando or Las Vegas or whatever you're doing from an operational standpoint fr from the event, uh, event point of view? Operational ownership resides with Winsight and with uh, our, my entire team, the entire trade show team um, moved over to Winsight. We're all employees of Winsight. Um, we're fully integrated in the Winsight uh, family. We're a division of Winsight, and so and we have full operational ownership in terms of that. To, uh, to uh, what's your name again, Mike? Yeah, Mike. yeah you're new to me. Um, <laughs> It took me 28 years for her to get that one. Um, my, <laughs> um, as, as Mike referenced, the, um, there's a minority seat on the board. Terry is involved in our board meetings and full in, in grained in all of those conversations and, and will have insight and be able to provide insight of any concerns or challenges or opportunities that they see regardless of what the, what the operational items are that we're addressing. Great. T Tim, thanks for... Uh, teeing up the next portion, which is, you know, a deal of this size, um, especially uh, with an association board. And Don, you may want to comment on the size of your board uh, in terms of trying to get p moving that many people to Tim's point. How do you navigate that in a way that you build consensus? And then the second part to that question is, it was amazing to me that you could have as many people involved in the, you know, that had to make a decision on this and the level of confidenti confidentiality that the deal maintained throughout. Until it was announced, almost no one knew that it was happening. So I'll just start with the board perspective and kind of how we navigated that. We have a 75-person board, uh, which is <laughs> down from an all-time high of 130. Um, but the 75 voting members are complemented by another 30 or so um, emeriti and some former past or past chairs. This is our improved governance structure now. Um, <laughs> after 10 years of working at this, so the more important question is maybe how could I have done a better job on the governance side uh, over these last 10 years. But we have a very active, engaged, terrific board. Uh, of really strong-minded, uh, uh, dedicated industry advocates. And it's a blessing in many, many ways when it comes to uh, much of the work that we do. When it relates to something like this, it becomes a bit challenging. And I would say we had, I mentioned earlier, the office in Orlando and a couple of the acquisitions we had done over the last four or five years. We had a chance, we've done two acquisitions, and in both cases we had a chance to kind of practice at a bit of a smaller, uh, less complicated level, kind of how to activate the board around a big decision. And we had a process that we had established through that time frame of having a small task force that would work on a particular project. And we often wouldn't um, share with the whole board the entirety of what that project was until the task force had completed its work, had a, a recommendation that would then go forward. In this case, we did that, but in a much more kind of truncated and even uh, closely, more closely held way. And we did uh, up until we brought our finance committee into the conversation, which is about 15 board members, which was about six months before we brought the, or maybe five months before we brought the transaction to the full board for a vote, there were less than a dozen people who were involved, staff and board. And we asked everyone uh, to sign an NDA, both on one side and our team, uh, and as well as our board members that were involved. We were very, very clear that what the implications of that were and how important it was to retain and maintain confidentiality. Our board is comprised, as I said earlier, of entrepreneurs and business people, so they're very used to this kind of a thing. They're used to doing deals. They're used to the importance of confidentiality, so uh, we didn't have any issues there. And when we eventually did uh, bring it to the full board, which was they were made aware of the prospect of this transaction about 10 days before the board vote. And we shared the information on a secure portal, which is the way we do things of, like this in, in any event. And again, we had every single board member sign an NDA. 
and they were wonderful. They were absolutely wonderful. At the time of the actual vote, Mary Pat and I were both in the room, um, we were quite confident it was going to go through. I always have had a sense that they were going to be, you know, among 75 board members, three or four or six or eight or nine or ten, uh, that might not be in support of it because this was such a closely held asset and there was such an emotional connection to our show, 100 years at that point, or 99 years at that point. And uh, there's a huge amount of emotionality in the decision. But the case that was presented and the compelling way in which it was presented and the work that the task force had done and they were instrumental in helping to present the, the recommendation, we ended up with an absolute unanimous vote. We didn't have a single dissenting vote and no one who abstained. So 100 percent. And so that was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Um, and I think in large part it was because it was a really smart idea. <laughs> and it was a really good thing to do and everybody could see the benefit and we were able to present the continuum of all the options that we did consider and one by one explain why we didn't do this and why we didn't do this and why we didn't do this and why we landed here. Uh, and so, but it was, uh, it was amazing, as you say, Galen, that we were able to maintain the confidentiality. And I really say, I take my hat, so, and I have done it uh, since with our board, that was a very important moment that showed that our board really was aligned and very um, fiduciarily responsible. We are under about five minutes, so. And uh, I, I think we have one more, one more polling question if you'd like to use it. Yeah, why don't you bring that up while I ask Mike the next question. Okay, so please bring up the next polling question for the group. Please go ahead and answer, thank you. Okay. Actually, it was keeping it confidential because it had such an influence on governance. <coughs> If it, you know, if it had gotten out and started running and taking on a life of its own, Don, you know, even with the talents that she had, would not have been able to get a, a unanimous vote at a board if people had been out there and start being able to put their own thoughts and spins and whatever on it. Mike, on the other side, you've got private equity that owns, you know, a uh, wind site, and you've got a banks that you're dealing with, and this was a very complicated structure. In, 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 in quick response, how did you go about that and what were their thoughts? Yeah, I would uh, just in response to the, um, to the poll, um, interestingly, uh, I'd be curious for your reaction, uh, Don, but um, the terms of the actual transaction were settled very early on uh, and, and didn't really resurface. Um, and, and so our approach all along had been we're not going to be able to um, um, to try to negotiate a, a good price, so to speak, for the show. This is a premium asset growing, um, and so we needed to reflect that in our, um, in our proposal. And so uh, the, uh, before the board, even any semblance of the board, really got involved, um, Don and team had we'd come to terms with them on, on the broad strokes of what the transaction uh, would look like. Um, the rest of it, there were things that moved in and out, but in terms of enterprise value, the structure of the, uh, of the transaction, um, the, the, the equity partnership, uh, et cetera, none of those things really became, um, uh, became thorny deal issues that you know, held, us, held us up, at least, at least from, from my perspective. Um, on the on the uh, Winsight side, um, we marveled at the association's ability to drive the process. It it took a long time from our our perspective, it's 18 months from start to finish. Um, uh, but understanding everything they had to go through in order to uh, to get that unanimous vote, uh, you understand why it, it it took that long. And we needed the time, frankly, because this, the structure that we uh, highlighted was different. Um, and we were asking to um, upstream money out of the business. We have equity, we have senior debt, and then we have the association note. 
That's how the, the capital structure looks. And your senior lenders generally aren't particularly excited about your um, uh, sending a bunch of money out of the business that's not to them. Right? <laughs> Can you hear me now better? Yeah. Um, and uh, so we had to convince our uh, equity, uh, um, uh, Pamlico, our private equity firm, as well as our senior lenders, um, that the um, regular uh, payment of uh, money to the association uh, was good for them and was good for the deal. Um, and it was the only way it was going to work. Uh, and as a result, it took us um, a fair amount of time to find the appropriate lender partner, uh, convince them that the structure made sense, that our strategy made sense, uh, and ultimately close that financing concurrent with the, the closing of the, um, the transaction. Mary Pat, why did you work as hard as you did to try to make this deal come together? Because as I looked at where our business was uh, three years ago, as I said to Terry, that we needed to act more like a media company to be relevant for the future and to grow at the continued pace. Knowing the inner workings of the association and the investments needed in, in terms of um, what the show would have needed on a timely basis, what was needed to continue to protect and grow the industry through policy and, um, and lobbying and for our food safety business, there was gonna be a challenge for us to really move in this speed that we needed to to keep up with the marketplace. I really, at times I felt like a trader, honestly, and then I thought that the best thing for the business and the association was the partnership with Winsight. And there's, a win site doesn't come along in every industry that is so um, complementary that there's str complete strategic complements. There's no overlap. Um, and that that was really going to accelerate the growth of the show, the experience for our customers, both the exhibitors and the attendees, um, and that it was going to be long term. We were at our hundred. We were coming up on our hundredth anniversary for the long term, for the next generations, the best thing for the show, for the business and the association was to take on this partnership. And Don asked me several times throughout the course of the year, where, where was I? I said, I still believe it is the best thing for the show and the association. And I believe that even more firmly after completing our first show, after transitioning. It's not easy to transition ownership of a trade show halfway through the year and we grew all of our metrics. And so um, that speaks volumes to the culture of Winside and the team that um, we went to work with and the culture of the association employees and team members that we still worked very closely with to launch um, the 2019 uh, 100th anniversary show. Great, thank you very much panelists. We've reached the end of our time. We'd like to be able to spend more time on this, but uh, Sam says we do have to pull the plug. Uh, <laughs> terrific job. Thank you so much for your attention and your participation.